Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name's Kathy Bellov. I'm from the University of Sydney. And because I am coming to you from Sydney, I would like to acknowledge that I'm sitting on Walla Medical land, um, the land of the Walla Medical people. Um, they have lived, worked and studied on this land for many tens of thousands of years. And I acknowledge elders past, present and emerging. And also to those of you who are also sitting on Indigenous lands, I acknowledge their elders as well. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to moderate this session. I'm delighted to be able to welcome Professor Goji Zhang to give our presentation today. I've known Goji for many years now, and he has a fantastic um, track record and career. Um, he did his degree at Xiaomen University and then went on to do his PhD at Kunmin Institute of Zoology at the Chinese Academy of Science, which is a very prestigious institution in China. After that, he moved to Copenhagen and was very rapidly promoted um, to professor. And just in 2002, Goji returned back to China to set up his lab at Zhejiang University, which is a really close partner to university to the University of Sydney. So we were, we were delighted to see that. Um, and I haven't had a chance to go and visit Goji since the pandemic, but hopefully I'll get a chance to, to see his new setup. I was very fortunate to see um, his lab and meet his team at Copenhagen. Um, so Goji um, publishes a huge number of papers, hundreds of papers, and they're all in top journals like Science and Nature and Cell. So I'm sure you've come across his research. He's a highly cited researcher in our field, and he focuses on biodiversity genomics and genome evolution. Um, so today Goji is going to talk to us about evolutionary significance of incomplete lineage sorting. So Goji, I will turn to you um, and we very much look forward to your talk. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy, for the nice introduction. And uh, I'd like to first thanks again uh, the invitation uh, for me to give this presentation in this seminar. Um, so my talk will be uh, focusing on a, a, a very special evolutionary uh, events that um, have only recently been revealed uh, by using the comparative genomics approach. Uh, so I, I would um, uh, give some, uh, probably first with the, some backgrounds of the incomplete lineage sorting and then uh, uh, more details about how this incomplete lineage sorting affects the evolution process and the phylogenetics analysis that we uh, used to have uh, in the uh, in the phylogenomics analysis. So my group has been focusing on the macroevolution process uh, using the uh, comparative genomics approach. So the main purpose of this analysis or study is trying to understanding the molecular mechanisms that leading to the macroevolution process, for example, the speciation, adaptation, and, and some of the uh, significant tree evolution. So, uh, for this, that we know is the mutation is very key factors that we all um, want to study to to try to see the underlying mechanism of all this process. So for the mutation that we uh, normally we f uh, focus on on those mutation that occurs on the lineage specifics, but for some of the mutation actually that we can enforce further back to the common ancestor uh, of uh, different species. So. For, uh, for some of the, uh, uh, the for some of the ideas or genotypes that uh, in the population or across species that in fact that we can also enforce back to the um, very long time that when this uh, different property type has been uh, coalescent, for example, is that um, uh, like in the population that assumes there are three different ideas, and based on the uh, coalescent theories that then we can enforce that at what time this uh, different idea has been can be tracing back to their common systems. So uh, based, uh, according to the coalescent theories that this coalescent time is related with the effective population size uh, of the population at, at, at different times. 
So we can see is that the, um, the larger of the population size it is, that the longer is that coalescent times that we can we could enforce through uh, for all these uh, ideas in the population. So and this actually is very strong effects on the uh, like the understanding of the genetics of variation uh, between the population or even cross species. For instance, that uh, assumes that there's uh, the three species that we always can identify some of the lineage specific uh, mutation or, or haplotypes in uh, in uh, different uh, lineage. But so for some of the uh, uh, haplotypes, actually, we can also switch tracing back to the common ancestor of all the species. And we can see is that uh, where some of the uh, uh, coalescent times uh, or, or this coalescent process actually is uh, conflicting with speciation process. For example, is that uh, from the topology of these three species, that the species B and C are more closely related from the species, uh, like the uh, speciation process. But if we use some of the operators being shared across the species, some of these ideas probably or hybridized could be tracing back to the common sister, and this probably does not necessarily uh, treat, uh, could, be, uh, could be tracing back according to the speciation process. But instead, that uh, like for this idea, like the green uh, idea, we can see that A uh, species A and B has more similar uh, on these uh, sequence uh, similarities uh, compared with the idea that's been inherited to C. So. Because of this, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this kind of a special process that uh, if we're using some of the genomic regions that are uh, uniquely uh, like in tracing paths with common ancestors, is sometimes that this uh, gene trace could be conflicting with the species trait. And this could be introduce some of the troubles on the inferior the uh, phylogenetic an uh, analysis. So, for example, here's the one case, very famous case that uh, we we all uh, very familiar with is the uh, uh, relationship between the gray apes. Now, using the compare uh, whole genome data, so we can see that about fifteen percent of the human genome actually is more closely related with uh, gorilla rather than chimpanzee, and uh, and we also know, also know that this is also caused by the uh, by the effects by the uh, like the incomplete in the sortings that were uh, some of the lead like inherited by humans, uh, uh, for example, that has been lost in in these two uh, does not inherit it by these two species, but in fact some of the um, uh, some of the, uh, the the ideas, for example, that has been present in the chimpanzee uh, and and possibly also the gorillas that uh, they are more similar uh, to each other and been inherited in these two lineage, but extinct probably in the humans. And at the same time, also we can see some of the human uh, ideas and, and gorilla and have been sharing, uh, uh, but has been uh, missing in the chimpanzee. For some of these uh, ideas that we could also see is that the human and gorillas is more similar, or the other way is that chimpanzee could also be more similar to the gorilla because of this reason. Okay. So the incomplete sorting, as we know, is that according to this process that we can see that could introduce some uh, phylogenetic, phylogenetic incongruence uh, that would infer in, uh, the phylogenetic relationships of the species. And there's also other, some other uh, uh, genetic process or evolutional process could also uh, causing this gene trace and species trait incongruence, uh, including the like the convergent evolution that uh, the uh, uh, similar mutation occurs in two different lineage independently, or the hybridization that uh, the gene flows between uh, species. And in community sorting actually is very, uh, not very well recognized that, that uh, it, in terms of the, the roles uh, during the phylogenetic analysis, even though so we have this impression that in community sorting might affect, but in what ways that we can how we can measure them, so quantify them and in fear for their in potential impacts on the other biological features, for example, the morphologies, this has not known, uh, not very well known before. But in contrast, that for example, the hybridization that we 
actually is more familiar with because we can see the hybridization between species very uh, frequent, very frequently, even in the uh, early human uh, evolution process that the modern humans interaction with the Denisovians or Neanderthals uh, for many times. And we can also see that a lot of the exam other examples like uh, the cross species hybridization occurs, like the this is one classical example, like in uh, occurs in Hedconius, the hybridization causing the wing, uh, uh, the the patterns uh, that is shifting around the across uh, different distant species. Well, the in community sortings, the uh, very classical examples, the in community sorting is the uh, the African uh, tertiary is the, the fish species that uh, occurs in the same uh, lake areas that the black uh, hundreds of species uh, uh, occurs that appears in, in in the same areas uh, within very short times, and because of this very rapid uh, change, uh, rapid uh, speciation process, that the uh, the uh, and since polymorphism does not have the uh, sufficient time to fix in different lineage, this could uh, leading to the very uh, uh, frequency, uh, high frequencies in community sorting occurs in this uh, uh, species. So we can see that some uh, this, uh, in this paper they report that there's lots of the ancestor polymorphism still present in, the, uh, in different lineage that leading to the sharing patterns of the uh, the morphology patterns across uh, species. So now, well, recently they said, as I say, is that previously uh, it's very easy to uh, to measure the integration. Uh, there's a lot of tools that we can we can measure the integration events, but in community sorting, actually, it's very uh, it's become uh, mysterious uh, a long time ago. But uh, now recently, there's uh, some new algorithm developed that uh, to detect or to distinguish the incompletely sorting event or integration events. Um, and this is mainly based on the uh, on the evolutionary process that well, incompletely sorting actually reflects the uh, coalescent times of, of different uh, lineage, um, uh, the uh, genotypes that in, in different species. So. Uh, the uh, there's one uh, precondition of the in community sorting occurs is that the uh, because the speciation process is very rapid and there's coalescent time uh, actually of this for example A and B or A and uh, A and C is that like uh, the the difference of the coalescent time is very short so leading to the random sortings of the uh, ancestor polymorphism in these two descendant uh, few descendant species. But in, con in, con con in contrast, that, that integration events could only occur that um, when the uh, after the speciation process. So, which means that uh, when we enforce the uh, uh, well, this is not coalescent times, uh, but the uh, gene flow times. We can see that the gene flow times and the speciation process of the A and A and C or the A and B that this uh, branch length. Will be much longer uh, than uh, uh, in general. Much longer. So this method basically is enforced this uh, the the branch length between this a uh, coalescent time of the AMC or AMB, uh, and sees that uh, will and, uh, and to see the uh, observe the uh, the the um, the branch length distribution. As I said, the integration library has a longer, a much longer inter uh, branch length. So, based on this distribution of this, uh, 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 these patterns, that we can enforce whether this is occurs due to the incompleteness sorting or integration. If we see that the gene tree and uh, species traits are in congruence. So this is one uh, typical method that we can use to uh, to uh, distinguish the incompleteness sorting or integration. And there's also some, uh, other uh, uh, methods like the uh, basis the uh, hinder marker model approach, uh, basically basically to enforce different uh, uh, topologies or speciation models, and and to inform that which models fit uh, much better on the uh, transitions of the uh, uh, nuclear substitution. Uh, so this method actually is very uh, precise and can inform. Uh, the um, the incompleteness sorting in single nucleotide uh, levels. 
So, uh, so this is method has been very useful to uh, measure the uh, where the location of the inconvenient sorting occurs in the genomes. So, based uh, on this background, so there's one, uh, of course, that the one, one important question is that uh, why there's uh, the strong interest of inconvenient sorting for macroevolutionary studies. So. As I say, is that uh, in community sorting is very easy to occur is that uh, the only uh, rapid radiation process that the speciation time uh, is too short to, to uh, let the uh, ancestral polymorphism uh, fix in the descendant species. So, which means that this is uh, this event will be closely related with the uh, rapid radiation process. And when, lo when you're looking at back to the evolution, the entire evolution process of all the like the um, metasomes, we can see that rapid radiation occurs very frequently, that including the earlier Cambridge explosion that are leading to the um, to the uh, establishment of the body um, body forms or body pans of the all the metasomes, and the most recent trace that the, the radiation occurs in the birds and the mammalians. This is true. Uh, most re uh, recent uh, re uh, rapid radiation occurs in this two lineage. For the birds, that um, uh, what we know is that the birds has been classified into three major groups. Uh, one including the uh, Pleiades, uh, and the second is the uh, Galeriformes, that like including many of the domesticated species. But actually, the majority of the uh, the bird species belong to the new avian species, so which accounting for ninety eight percent of all the extended bird species. And and we now not also know that the this new avian actually is the the um uh, all can be tra tracing back to the uh to this period, KT boundary periods. Uh, so there's an hypothesis that the after the other dinosaur extinct. The new avian has been exposed to uh, uh, to a new ecological niche, so they could rapidly uh, evolve, and there's a lot of lineage occurs in this uh, in this period. And because of this rapid radiation, the avian phylogeny, uh, the bird phylogeny, has been uh, very challenging, and, and there's a lot of been uh, uh, controversies over the uh, phylogeny of the birds. So, for example, this is the study in the lab. This is the study based on on few low size uh, and 19 low size of the uh, uh, on genomic low size that to inform the phylogeny so you, uh, across several hundreds of uh, species. But you can see is that using this very small numbers of the uh, uh, genes actually so we can does not really resolve the phylogeny because we can see the polytomic structures on the new avian uh, uh, groups. And when you compare the uh, this topology with previous studies, uh, so the red colors, uh, the red back, uh, background means the topology uh, has been uh, supported by different uh, um, phylogenetics analysis. So we can see very few uh, nodes actually supporting each other using different um, uh, methods. And this is reflects that the fact that there's a lot of the integration, uh, sorry, the uh, incongruence on the phylogenetic inference in the new avian, and this is. Uh, could be also because of the rapid radiation of the uh, new avian groups. So in 2014, we organized this avian phylogenomic projects to uh, to present the uh, 48 bird genomes uh, that uh, with uh, one species represent one order. So we cover all the bird orders and using the whole genome data that we try to resolve the uh, the phylogenies of the new avian. Uh, speciation process. We can see that where we can cut, uh, we can distinguish this uh, uh, diversification process very well with the full genome data. But later is that uh, in, in 2015, there's another paper that using uh, uh, 259 loci, uh, next is the archer conserved uh, elements. Uh, and using more species than 198 species, the build a phylogenetic trace. And we can see that uh, this is the, uh, uh, the trace that we built using the full genome data. And this is the trace that basically you see data, you uh, see you see tra uh, trace using more species. So you can see there's still a lot of uh, uh, orders been shifting around so that uh, and there's a lot of incongruence uh, between these two topologies. And this leading to the uh, uh, um, discussion regarding whether well, this, because we have a few classes of our uh, uh, whole genome phylogenetic analysis, 
or whether it's because of this analysis, because they have a lower genomic, uh, genomic sampling, because they only have uh, uh, seven point a megabase of the uh, genomic sequence being used for the phylogenetic analysis. So, continue with this that we uh, in, we organize this uh, bird genome 10K projects to to sequence all try uh, I mean to sequence all the bird species that uh, uh, the genomes uh, across all the bird species. So uh, two years ago we uh, we finished the. Uh, uh, the family levels of the phylogenetic as a uh, whole genome sequencing and use this 363 uh, bird genome were recovering almost 92% of the uh, bird families. So we use this uh, high amounts of the data that so we reconstruct the phylogenetic analysis. So we can see is that our new phylogenies, we can see there's also uh, a lot of the controversial uh, uh, incongruence uh, with this uh, prime trace, the UC trace. So we can see that shifting, also shifting around. And, and that trace that, uh, uh, so which means that where our data actually supposed uh, much better is that where whole genome data is more congruent compared with the, uh, 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 the, 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 the analysis with field data. So, but still, that uh, even though we can use the full genome data uh, to resolve much of the controversies, but still, somebody knows uh, some of the species that remains very challenging. For example, this is a very uh, uh, striking case that Huazins, that uh, uh, this species, that even using the whole genome data, we can see a, a complete different topologies of uh, phylogenetic position that we can come out for this species. It could uh, group with, with, uh, with uh, you can see the, the topology, uh, the uh, position would, uh, would be uh, quite uh, uh, changeable significantly. So, which means that even with the whole genome data, still some of the, uh, the nodes that are still very difficult to, uh, to resolve. So, what the, the uh, there's a lot of hypotheses regarding this, why this uh, uh, phylogenics has been very challenging uh, on some of these nodes. And one of the, uh, the studies, very good uh, uh, studies that bases on the um, uh, transposome analysis, that bases on the present and absence of the transposome element or insertion and deletion of the transposome. And actually, this is also provides a, a very unique phylogenetic signal. So uh, in this study, is that uh, this is studies published by in plus biologists by uh, uh, uh Alessandras. So they use this uh, 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 transposome, the present and absent patterns, the transposome uh, to inform the phylogenetic uh, relationships. So using this, that we can, they can also see is that where there's also a lot of the uh, incongruence occurs, for example, the mouse birds that uh, like they can see different uh, transposome elements to support different topology uh, of, of this basis. So, and, and all this is leading uh, to the uh, conclusions that probably the incompletely sorting could occur that in the common systems of this, uh, this whole uh, branch. So, because like, for example, like the transposome, uh, some list transposon may uh, present in the population, uh, the large population and sister popula population, where some of the transposon is in inherited by, uh, for example, by this lineage, have been sharing across this species. But some of the transposon only sharing by this groups uniquely, and some of the transposon only sharing uh, by this, uh, these two groups uh, specifically. So this is the basic principles of the incomplete sorting. So uh, based on this information, uh, they, they could also uh, build up a, a phylogenetic net uh, across the uh, speciation process, which means that this is not the traditional phylogenetic trace that we can see, but it's like the uh, uh, phylogenetic net uh, network that could enforce based on the genomic sequence uh, like the transposome that's been sharing across different species. So, so which means that uh, where the during the phylogenetic analysis, we can see the incompletely sorting my effects uh, significantly on the uh, uh, inference of the phylogenetic relationships. And the second topic is like I would like to introduce today is the uh, like in, in in our topics about the 
how whether the incriminating sorting also contributes to morphologic evolution. For example, this is the phylogenetic, uh, phylogenetic trace that we build with the whole genome data. And, and this is the, the trace, uh, phylogenetic trace based on the anatomic data in the bird. So we can see there's lots of incongruence between the genomic, full genomic data and anatomic data uh, based on the phylogenetic trace. As we say, is that the summary, uh, the incriminating sorting could also affect the incongruence between the gene trace and the uh, genomic trace. So whether this incriminating sorting could leading to uh, uh, to the morphologic patterns that we see today, so that's like some of the distant uh, distant related species they share the same uh, morphologies. For example, these two groups that like has been distributed. Uh, compared to different lineage, but for morphology, there's more close to related uh, each other. So to do to do this, uh, working on the birds been challenging because this so complicated process involves so many species. So we uh, we put uh, this question to the marsupial uh, groups because. Marsupia also experience a very rapid radiation uh, process, and also there's a, uh, this discussion regarding the uh, phylogenetic incongruence uh, conflicting uh, in, within these groups. The major conflicts actually is coming to this uh, uh, this group is micro uh, microbial theory. So this is the call uh, monitor among that. Uh, uh, um, uh, monitor their uh, their monkeys. So this is the uh, the, the um, again, looking at this uh, this uh, uh, Figures. So this species is distributed in South um, Americans, uh, uh, Americans. But uh, actually, from the morphologies uh, that we can see, this species actually be share a lot of morphology feature with some of the uh, trading groups. For example, uh, the monitored monkeys that uh, uh, have this unpaired sperms that is different with the option. Option has the pair sperms that. Uh, 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 for for most of the times, and monitor their monkeys also has very similar of the uh, uh, color types uh, structures, uh, similar more similar with the uh, trading species, and this species that the male also uh, um, uh, they don't have this uh, mammalian uh, glands, uh, and also this is different with the option the uh, the um, South uh, American uh, marsupial species. And we also can see a lot of the other uh, structure, even on the brands or the uh, skeleton structures, they are more similar between this species and some of the uh, Australian species. So this leading to the hypothesis that the mon uh, monitor their monkeys probably belong to the Australian groups uh, rather than the, uh, the uh, American uh, marsupial species. So uh, from the morphology and mitochondria data, so we can see is that where the uh, monitor their monkeys uh, that is uh, grouping together uh, one of the uh, uh, groups, the Australian marsupial species uh, 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 lineage. So, so uh, under this uh, topology, it means that the monitor monkeys probably its origin in Australians, but it's been uh, uh, moving back, uh, moving to Australian uh, migrates to the uh, as, as South Am uh, Americans after the speciation process. But actually, it's based on the, trans the similar transposome analysis that uh, in this paper, uh, in this paper, they can enforce that where uh, Monte Mon uh, Montes actually is be uh, belongs outside the Australian groups. So they're sister groups of the entire Australian uh, marsupial uh, lineage. So this is leading to the two different topologies uh, conflicting uh, each other, and different topology leading to the different speciation uh, uh, hypothesis. So here is that using the full genome data that we build uh, the phylogenomics analysis that uh, including two uh, uh, two species from the uh, the proto uh, donkeys uh, uh, and by. Uh, uh, and the other two species that be, uh, belongs to the uh, uh, diuromorphic groups. So we build the phylogenomics uh, using the full genome data, uh, the whole genome alignment region to build this phylo new phylogenies. So it confirms that while well, this species in this uh, belongs outside the Australian group, so uh, there's the sister groups, the Australian marsupials. So um, 
which means that Australians, uh, the, the uh, evolution process, the entire Australian uh, lineage actually is uh, separate to the uh, American uh, marsupial species. So this is basically the whole genome phylogeny. But if, in fact, if we uh, divide this uh, genomic region into uh, partition in, in different proportion, uh, or, or, uh, based on the topo uh, topology of the individual gene tree, we can see is that the entire genome actually is supporting three major topologies. Uh, one is uh, grouping together, uh, so this is supporting the speciation trace. Okay, so this is consists about forty percent of the genome region supporting this uh, species uh, topology. But this one third of the uh, uh, genomic regions, uh, this um, multiple monties that is grouping together uh, different uh, groups. That group is supporting that the uh, the micro. Uh, uh, Groups uh, grouping together with dicey groups. Uh, so we can see that the proportion is all very significant uh, across uh, lineage, uh, across topologies. And even using the transposome element, we can see that where even though large numbers of the transposome patterns support this speciation process, but actually the lots of the uh, transposome support these two different topologies. So then we enforce that whether this is because the integration uh, process or whether this is contributed by inconvenient sorting. So we can use this, we mentioned before, that where if this is occurs because of the inconvenient sorting, we can see the uh, coalescent times, uh, this is coalescent time between B and C, could be older than the speciation process A and B. Uh, so which means the, the coalescent time is occurs even longer than the uh, speciation process. That's the hybrid in the under the hybridization events that um, you can see is that the uh, divergence times uh, like the uh, so when you see the uh, uh, the B and Cs should occur after the speciation speciation. So the uh, the divergence time between should be younger than the speciation times like the A and B groups. So uh, based on this principle, so use the, uh, the genomic region support topology to inform the uh, divergence time uh, 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 across different groups. Uh, so both genomic regions supporting the speciation process that their divergence times and almost like the speciation process between these two like A and B, uh, these two groups. But those species, those genomic regions supporting alternative uh, topologies, they, uh, the uh, divergence time would either support co uh, coalescent times or the divergence time of the, like the hybridization occurs. So we can see that uh, both patterns, the, uh, the alternative topologies, uh, genomic di divergences, always longer um, uh, older than the speciation time that we can infer based on these two species. Uh, so which means that the coalescent time or the divergence time occurs far before these two Australian groups uh, uh, split. So which means that coalescent, uh, this should be the coalescent times that we which means that it's more likely due to the incomplete starting rather than having okay. So we can also import the uh, uh, more details of dating but, uh, under awareness of the incomplete sorting. So we can see is that where so uh, we can we can we can enforce that where monitor their monkey the Australian groups uh, these two is the divergence time is occurs about nine million years, and even with the incomplete sorting events, this uh of the uh, this group with the other two groups is all uh, much older than the times when the um, the continents, the um, Antarctic continents, the Australian groups. So, which means that it's very less likely speciation occurs with Australian and this species being passed migrates uh, to the um, to the South American continents. So, which means. Geographic separate 
is also supporting it's less likely that the hybridization occurs uh, in, in, in this lineage. Okay. So and the next type that we were interested in whether the incommunity sorting could also involve the morphologies. Assumes that there, uh, there's an ancestor polymorphism present in the ancestor uh, population. And under the incommunity uh, uh, non appreciation process, that we can uh, see is that the, uh, the genome type can be sorting uh, based on the speciation process, where the A and B could be uh, inherited the same genome types, while the, uh, the algorithm inherit. Genome types. So this is following the process. But under the incompletely sorting, we can see that this genetic option was randomly fixed in the descendant species. For example, here B and C could inherit the same genome types. Okay. So it seems this genome types could also affect the morphology. Then we can assume that we can enforce that where would also affect or reflect in the morphology pattern we can see today. And here's one uh, some of the examples that we can uh, we can pick it up in the morphology across all this. Uh, this. So this is the topologies that we can see today, uh, like the, the speciation process that uh, the monitor there are monkeys, the sister groups of these two uh, uh, Atreidian groups. But when you're looking at the, uh, the, the patterns, like including the humeral patterns, that uh, we can see the um, uh, this curve. Uh, the, the curve is much um, uh, is uh, is much more like in the middle uh, in these two two spaces, and this is similar with the option. But well, in the monitor uh, monkeys, so we can see is that this curve is much higher in the uh, uh, is much on the on the tops. So this pattern is much more similar with koalas or wallabies uh, in, in the feature. And more significant is the, uh, the vertebrate patterns that the, uh, uh, some of the uh, fossil vertebrates, we can see the counting this bomb, uh, like in these two groups, uh, in these groups, we can see the T1 is much shorter than T2. But in the koalas or the wallabies and also the uh, monitor their monkeys, we can see that T1 is more close to the T2 uh, in, in terms of the length. But options that represent the other uh, types that the T1 is also shorter than T2 is similar to the uh, to these two, uh, these, these two groups. And this also, we can also see the similar pattern the incisors, like the, uh, the teeth uh, patterns, then there's gaps between the incisors and the other, other tooth. Uh, but koalas and the wallabies and mortotea monkeys, they have uh, close uh, patterns uh, of this, uh, on the teeth uh, patterns. So, which means that when the, in the morphology, we can see a lot of similar uh, similarity between the monotone monkey and the koala or wallaby. Uh, so basis on this that we can we can see try to uh, see whether some of the genomic region that has been affected by the community sorting could also contribute to the morphologic uh, patterns. So we can from this uh, uh, genomic analysis we can identify some of the genes that showing high similarity between these two groups, the diploid groups and or this this is the koala groups and the micro this is monitor the monkeys. The similarity is much higher than the other uh, lineage. Here's one example is that uh, koala wallaby share the same genome ties, uh, amino acids with the monitor their monkeys, but the other uh, uh, the Tasmanian endeavors and antikiners uh, uh, share the similar patterns of the with the options. Uh, so, uh, and this is the another uh, another uh, genes that um, we can see that the uh, this is the region that we shown the incomplete sorting pattern as we say that we can use the Markov uh, uh, methods to import the single nucleotide uh, levels of the uh, incomplete sorting. So we can see the entire coding region has been covered by the incomplete uh, sorting. Uh, so the next confirms that what uh, this this pattern could contribute to morphology. So we're looking at this gene. This gene is that uh, uh, the, uh, the knockout of this gene, like in mouse, would cause the vertebrate uh, pattern change. So to confirm whether this gene, that the amino acid pattern, could also contribute to the morphology pattern, as we say, is that um, 
Well, there's T1 is shorter than T2, like uh, we can observe in these groups. Uh, but in koalas or wallabies, the T1 and T2 is more uh, similar. So this is the pattern also you can see it in the multiple monkeys. And we can also see the very fit very well with the uh, uh, pattern of the amyloid acid distribution that all these three species share the Q and uh, uh while the uh, these two group uh, uh, option and the uh, Tasmanian endeavor and the uh, at, um, um, and the canines also have another uh, genome types. So fortunately, we can see that in the mouse, we can also see the genome types also belong to Q, which is similar with the multiple their monkeys. So, but in the mouse that we can see the Y types, well, the Y type T1 is much higher, longer than T2, okay? But according to this pattern, we can assume that if we convert the Q to R, we can see that when other could be uh, like the uh, uh, the T1 will be become shorter uh, uh, based on this pattern, or T T2 will be become longer because the T1 is much lower than uh, T2, shorter than T2 in this genome types. So in, in the mouse, that we we uh, produce this transgenic genes, uh, transgenic mouse that uh, com uh, converts this Q to R genome types. So you can see that after this. Uh, uh, um, uh, in this experiment, we can see that uh, after we changing this amino acid, the T1 uh, becomes much shorter uh, uh, in, 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 in mouse, which means that the T1 becomes more uh, similar close to the T2. And then we can see this uh, uh, change is quite significant. So this is one example. Another example is the uh, PA, uh, uh, PAPSS2, as I uh, just mentioned, the entire gene has been covered by the uh, community sortings. So uh, we also know that this gene has been uh, uh, found that in mouse uh, is also related with the uh, patterns in the humerus. So as I mentioned, the humeral pattern is also more similar between the uh, uh, koala groups with the mont uh, monkeys. Um, so he has designed a different uh, approach that ex experiment. So we replace the homologs of the genes uh, in mouse with the option and wallaby and Tasmanian endeavors. So we can see so after, uh, so then we can measure the landscapes of this uh, response. So we can see that the, uh, the landscape pattern, the PCA confirms that when the, uh, this pattern could be a uh, uh, cluster basis on the genetic background. So uh, the mouse with this uh, uh, this wallaby genome type or the devil uh, genome type or option uh, uh, genome type, they are all uh, this, uh, uh, clustered through each other according to the genome type, uh, gen genom genetic background, okay? So we, we introduced another experiment that to change the amino acids of the option to the molecular data mountains with four amino acids, okay? So we can see is that where this new transgenics, the only chance is the um, option backgrounds, but it's been converted with some of the amino acids to the molecular mountains. Uh, so we can see that there's a bit change of the, uh, the patterns. And this pattern, we can see that we can measure the similarities between the different groups uh, or with the, uh, Monitor, uh, monitor their monkeys uh, version, we can see that after this change, that uh, the patterns become more similar between the monitor their monkey with wallaby groups. So confirm the, uh, confirming again that the, this amino age change could change the pattern and leading to the more similarity between the wallaby and, and the, koala, uh, the koala groups or wallaby groups oh, regarding the humoral pattern. So, Altogether, this is uh, uh, provides a, uh, an experiment um, data to suppose that where the genet uh, the genome has been sorting by uh, randomly sorting by incomplete sorting, that's been inherited randomly in the descendant species, could really affect the genome types, uh, the phenotypes that we can see uh, in, in those species. So here we can we can say is that where this pattern could also leading to the uh, similarities, uh, morpholo similar morphology we can see in the distant species and quite similar with the, like the integration or convergent events that we can see uh, today. 
based on different uh, uh, other uh, erosional mechanisms. Okay, so, and the, the final topics I would like to introduce that there's big topics to that how frequencies the in community is starting with affects the macroevolution process. Well, this is only occurs in the rapid, uh, rapid radiation process. So, using this uh, uh, this uh, uh, principle that uh, the method I mentioned is the comparative genomic approach. So we can try. Uh, we can we pass this uh, incompletely sort of occurrence of incompletely sorting or hybridization uh, in the phylogenies of the Drosophila. Okay, this is the uh, the entire Drosophila group which generate the whole genome data. And to investigate that, how frequency the be uh, phylogenetic incongruence occurs in different lineage. So we can see that where there's also shifts of the phylogenetic incongruent, we can see that uh, in, in many of the lineage, even including the Drosophila um, metagaster that we commonly use, that there are also uh, incongruence between these uh, similar Drosophila groups. So we can also enforce that how frequency that this is contributed by the incompletely sorting and all the integration with the method that similar method that I mentioned that we can distinguish these two uh, evolution process. So on the top here is it's showing the uh, frequencies in community sorting, on the bottom is showing the in integration uh, frequency. So we can see that this uh, this is the uh, 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 um, so far as uh, genus that they has the higher frequencies of community sorting occurs. But in the Drosophila uh, subgenus, we can see that they are higher frequencies of the integration occurs. So which means that uh, within this, the entire Drosophila groups, there are two different methods, uh, uh, the, the, the two lineage has different proportion of community sorting uh, or the integration contributes by this uh, uh, phylogenetic uh, incongruence. So back to the uh, topics of the human and gray lab, we can see that, as I mentioned, that 50% of the, uh, our genome is more similar with gray lab because of this in community sorting. Because of this, like, we, we, we then also uh, uh, apply this method, methods on the broader scales of the phylogenetic uh, in the uh, in the primate. So this is the uh, 50 primate genomes that we produced recently and in using this full genome data is that we also inform the uh, phylogenetic incongruence and also enforce how frequencies that this, this is the due to the incomplete sorting. So we can see uh, the dark, uh, the, uh, the, the color is more dark than it means that the higher levels of incomplete sorting occurs. So we can see that in Makaka groups, the high frequencies between incomplete sorting. And there's also the other groups that also the, um, uh, it should have extremely high frequencies in community uh, sorting occurs, that even like including 60% uh, of the genome has been affected by in community sorting. So it, which means that there is a lot of the, um, uh, and since the polymorphism has been randomly fixed in, in this, this groups. So we can also enforce that uh, based on this data, we can also enforce that using the uh, uh, analyze this uh, the uh, in community sorting events in the, in the genomic location, and to enforce that how frequencies that uh, this location have uh, uh, have higher frequencies in community sorting across the primary phylogenetics. Uh, so the high uh, IRS, which means that in this region. Uh, it occur uh, this incomplete sorting occurs many times in different uh, uh, evolutionary nodes. So we can see, uh, we can also see some region has much lower frequencies of incomplete sorting. So those, uh, let's uh, again mark uh, one of the region has much higher incomplete sorting uh, is the MSC region it has higher frequencies of incomplete sorting, which means this region tend to have a higher levels of uh, uh, in community sorting in different uh, primary nodes. Uh, and this is all the same for the PAR region in the chromosome has higher frequencies of in community sorting and uh, it occurs uh, in multiple times in different evolution nodes. And then we can also trace in back that uh, what uh, what kind of, uh, what, what, uh, what, which type of genes tend to have a higher uh, frequencies of in community sorting. And we can see is that where low genes that relatives with the immunity response, 
uh, tend to have a higher frequencies being completely sorted. Uh, so putting back again, so the macro evolution process of the entire metasome. So we can, as we say, is that the rapid radiation occurs very frequently, which means that uh, this process of what we would always come in uh, uh, accompany his body in complete sorting uh, occurs. So which means that complete sorting actually could, should have a very, very important uh, uh, roles uh, during this speciation process or the establishment of the biodiversity pattern now that we see. So this is summary summary of my, my talks. Uh, so again, the incomplete sorting is one of the major sources of the phylogenetic uh, conflicts. And incomplete sorting also contributes to the morphology pattern. We can see uh, that the remains shared uh, in distant species. And we're going to see the incomplete sorting frequently occurs during speciation process. So for this, I would like to thank my uh, collaborators, all these projects, the avian phylogenomic projects, uh, uh, is, uh, mainly uh, tried by these two, uh, Justin and Shao Hong. And Shao Hong is also the main person working on the incomplete sorting. And the Mashupia groups. And in the Mashupia groups, I would like to also thank uh, Kathy providing the, uh, some of the genomic data that we use in this analysis, and Marilyn and uh, Christoph, and they provide the morphology data as well on a, a study. And the Josopha Philas and the primates uh, in community sorting has been uh, uh, collaborated with these uh, my researchers. Yeah, I would like to also uh, introduce my uh, new centers in Zhejiang University. So this is new uh, brand new uh, centers for evolutionary uh, organism biology. So we're now recruiting uh, tenure checks as assistant professor. So if you have good candidates, please welcome to recommend. And finally, I would like a bit of the advertisement. So there could be a uh, third Asia EVO conference will be organized uh, in Singapore uh, in December. So this will be the um, third time that we gather together. So the first time we, uh, we uh, organized in, in, in Shenzhen, China, and the second time was in Japan, in Tokyo. But the time was in online conference. But now this this year, we finally could gather together again in Singapore. So hope we can see uh, each other very soon. Thank you. <laughs>